matter, symbols matter, representation matters. And if you look around Newfoundland and Labrador, there are words, symbols, and representations of Indigenous people that cause harm and don't accurately represent who we are. Think of your own name, for example. Think of how much it means to you and is part of your identity. Now, imagine you tell someone that your name is Mary, but they call you Brenda instead. It doesn't feel too good, does it? But finally, change appears to be coming. The provincial government is conducting a review of cultural symbols, observances, and monuments. And that review has already turned up plenty that need to change. The first change to be announced is the Provincial Coat of Arms. Designed in 1637, the official description refers to this pair of Beothic warriors as savages. You get a sense of where we're starting from. Next, government announced it was renaming Red Indian Lake in central Newfoundland. Good pick, but government failed to consult widely enough on the new name and ended up choosing a name from the Mi'kmaq language for a place that was inhabited by Beothic people, which rubbed some people the wrong way. A few months later, the province announced that it would now be called Beothic Lake instead. Then came the Mary March Museum in Grand Falls, Windsor. The Beothic woman for whom the museum was named was kidnapped by European settlers who called her Mary March. Her name is Demasduit. And so now, the museum will be known as the Demasduit Regional Museum. So that's what's been announced so far. But where does the review go next? Government says there's plenty more under official consideration. Inside Confederation Building, there is a huge mural that depicts the province's early history. And the Indigenous representation in it is problematic to say the least. The mural is now going to be expanded by an Indigenous artist. Then there's the statue of Court Real across the street from Confederation Building. Gaspar Court Real was a Portuguese explorer and among other things, a slave trader, who was said to have abducted 57 Indigenous people upon his arrival in Newfoundland or Labrador in 1501. Speaking of statues, there's a plan to build a statue honoring the Beothic, the island's original inhabitants and stewards of the land, on the grounds of Confederation Building. There's the former Discovery Day holiday on June 24th. The name was scrubbed in 2020 because you can't discover a place where people have already lived. It's been called the June holiday ever since, but the province is looking for a better name. Then there's the Colonial Building in St. John's. Once the seat of government in Newfoundland, the building is now being turned into a museum. But the word colonial and all of its terrible history may not be in the building's new name. That's the official list for now, but there could be more to come. There's Mount Peyton in central Newfoundland, which is named after John Peyton Jr., the very person who kidnapped Demasduit and was charged with killing her husband when he tried to rescue her. In Nunatsivut, four of the local schools are named after Moravian missionaries. Some former students in the community think that the name needs to go, although not everyone in the community agrees. And then there's Wilfred Grenfell, whose name is all over the place. From the Labrador Grenfell Health Authority to Memorial's Grenfell Campus in Cornerbrook. Grenfell has long been upheld as a hero of this province, but there's been a renewed focus on his role in sending Indigenous children to residential schools. This list isn't definitive or complete, and no list can sum up the pain that Indigenous folks feel when they hear, see these places and symbols. And none of this would be news if more people had been listening to Indigenous people from the beginning instead of sidestepping our history or silencing our voices. But now you know. And now you are listening. And that is a start.